Hello, my name is Charles and welcome to our video on how to use the new modify event feature for Google Analytics 4 properties. In my last video, I covered the create event feature. Uh, both the create event and modify event features are very much complementary and related. With create events, this feature we went over last time allows us to create brand new events. And the most common use case for that is going to be to create conversions. So maybe you have a page view event, but you only want views to your blog to be a conversion. For that, we would use the create event feature. There's other examples where we might need to use a feature called modify events. Modify events are going to be extremely helpful anytime we need to change the way an existing event or parameter is being recorded. As an example, in our events report, we might accidentally have multiple versions of a scroll tracking event where uh, one developer tagged it with scroll and another developer tagged it with scroll underscore tracking or scroll space tracking. We can use the new modify events feature to actually fix those issues directly in the UI. And this is gonna be extremely important if there's ever situations where you maybe are just not able to fix uh, your tagging issues at the source. Uh, maybe your Google Tag Manager developer is out on vacation, or perhaps uh, it's coming from a mobile app and you're not gonna be able to actually re release an up 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 update for maybe a week or so. So let's use scroll tracking as our example of how we can use modify events to fix potential tagging issues we have. You may or may not know, but by default, scrolls are actually something that are automatically recorded in the new GA4 properties. If you go into your admin section, so if I click admin, I go into my data streams and we click on our data stream for our website, Google has a new feature called enhanced measurement, which is the same thing as automatic measurement. Simply by default in Google Tag Manager, or if you're uh, hard coding the tag directly on your website, when you put this global tag everywhere on your website, automatic measurement actually allows it to do more than just measure page views. And one of the features it has is scrolls. By default, if you enable this feature, uh, it'll actually measure anytime someone gets to the 90% uh, scroll percentage on your page or the very bottom of the page. So that's awesome because automatically now Google Analytics is gonna measure scrolls for everyone. However, it only measures 90%. So if we go back into our events report, uh, many of you who've set up scroll tracking in the past are probably used to setting them up for different percentages. Maybe when users get to 10%, 25%, 50%, 75%, 90%, or even 100%. You don't just want 90%, but you want additional milestones as well. So you can actually figure out how engaged your users are with that page. And remember, automatic measurement only does 90% by default. So one of the most common things that many users for the new GA4 properties are likely gonna do is they're gonna add their own version of scroll tracking in addition to the automatic scroll tracking. So this is something very common we did with Universal Analytics. Here I have my global GA4 tag, which has that 90% uh, milestone by default. And I also went in and I set up my own version of scroll tracking. And what I did is I didn't pay attention and I didn't really think about how I wanted this data to be recorded in, in our GA4 property. So what happened was when I set up this new scroll tracking event, I used an event name of scroll space tracking, and I actually set the parameter to measure how far someone scrolled as percentage underscore scrolled. Now, I actually published these changes not too long ago, and if we go to our website right now, what I can do is I can use an extension called the GA Debugger. Uh, it's a Chrome extension, and right now I have that enabled as on. And what that means is, since I have the Google Analytics Debugger enabled and I push my changes live through Google Tag Manager, everything I do on these pages, all my scrolls, all my interactions, all my page views, uh, when you have that debugger, the Google Analytics debugger on, there's a report in Google Analytics that actually streams that data in called debug view. And in this debug view, you can now see in real time, all of these interactions happening. 
So let's go back and start to see what happens as we interact with additional pages. So I'm gonna maybe click on our Google Marketing Platform page. I'll just start scrolling to the bottom. Uh, maybe I'll click on another page for resources. And same thing, I can just click and scroll to the bottom. And as I'm doing this, uh, the debug view, since it uses a debug mode flag, automatically streams, again, all that data in here. And you can see right now the problem I have. I now have two different events for scroll tracking. I have the default one for scroll and then my new one for scroll tracking. And if I click on these, I can also see my other mistake. In the scroll tracking event, I have a parameter for percentage scrolled. You can see here it has a value of 50. But in my default scroll, it's called percent underscore scrolled. So what this means is, is if I push these changes live to all my users, uh, it's actually going to come into my events report as two different events with two different parameters. Luckily, since I'm uh, only testing this right now with the debug mode, anything you send to the debug view, Google Analytics actually doesn't process. It'll throw out uh, at the end of the day. But um, since uh, if I were to push this live, that would be a problem, right? Because I have those multiple events. So what I wanna show you now is how, uh, let's say if a developer pushed those changes for me live and I didn't have access to Google Tag Manager to fix it at the source, how I could fix those using the modify event feature. So this is a really cool feature. So first start off by going in your modify event report. In here, you can create your event modifications. You're able to create up to 50 of these uh, 50 right now is the limit. And if you click create in your event modification, the first thing you need to do is to give your modification a name. So I'm gonna call this my fix for uh, scroll tracking. You wanna give it a meaningful name. So if you ever need to come back and edit or maybe another admin is in here, uh, they're easily able to figure out what's happening. Again, if they ever need to reference it or make changes. So in here, uh, the first thing we have is we have access to all of our parameters. Now, I'm going to try and fix the incorrectly uh, named event. So I'm going to leave the event name here. Uh, we're going to leave it as equals, and we want to isolate the scroll tracking event, which right now is coming in as scroll space tracking. And our objective is we want to rename it to just scroll. So if you scroll down to the bottom, once you've matched the event, you can now modify that event. And right now I can simply say, uh, I want the event name, instead of scroll space tracking, rename it to just scroll. And that's how simple it is to use the new modify events feature. You can also do much more complex changes with this. An example of that would be if we wanted to fix our parameter, which had that percent scrolled. Remember, percent scrolled is the correct parameter name and percentage scrolled is the incorrect one. So I can fix this by typing in the correct param parameter name. And then what's really cool is there's the documentation uh, for the modify and create events that you can access in GA by just hitting your question mark and going to help. Uh, but in this documentation, it references that you can reference values for parameters with these double brackets. So what I want to do in Google Analytics 4 is I actually want to put double brackets and I want to pass the value from the incorrectly named scroll event to the correct one. So what this is doing is it's creating a new parameter called percent underscore scroll, which is the same as the correct parameter. And it's going to use the value from the incorrect one. So at this point, I actually have two parameters. I have percent underscore scrolled and my original percentage underscore scrolled. So the last thing I would need to do is I want to actually delete the uh, event that, or the event parameter that I no longer need. So to do this, all you have to do is type in the percentage underscore scrolled. And if you leave it blank, uh, Google built this feature to automatically delete that parameter. So how this eventually works is uh, first of all, it renames our event to just scroll. Then it takes the parameter from the uh, incorrect parameter and correctly names the parameter name. And then after it's used and put in the correct value, 
it deletes the incorrectly named parameter. And if I hit create, I've now created these changes in real time. Now, if we wanted to test our new changes, all we have to do is go back to the website. And since we have the debug mode enabled to on, all we have to do is again, simply start scrolling around, interacting with the website. And as we do that, again, that debug mode is on. So all of these changes are only going to be streamed inside that new debug view report we have. It's just such a cool feature because now we don't have to really go into our console and do all these complicated changes. And as we do that, you can see everything kind of dispatching in real time. So within here, we can see all of our new scroll events and we can see everything else up here as well. And all we see is scroll for everything. You can see it for both the manual as well as the automatic parameters. Everything is now named the same. And if I go in here, remember by default, we only had a 90% milestone. I can open up percent scrolled. This before was called percentage underscore scrolled. It's now been renamed as percent scrolled. It's renamed the event from scroll um, space tracking to just scroll. Therefore, it's deduplicated my multiple events and multiple parameters into a single consistent event and parameter structure. Uh, structure. This greatly improves our data quality because now everything will be tracked as once. Now, a few last notes. It's important to note that using this new modify events feature, it only works point in time forward. So this isn't going to help uh, fix any retroactive data issues that you have already captured. Uh, perhaps the data deletion tool uh, that's currently rolling out might help with that and sort of cleaning up data we no longer want. But simply, this only works point in time forward. Again, within the modify event feature, you can have up to 50 of these created. Uh, you can sometimes perhaps break out your changes into multiple modifications. Um, but I liked doing both in one so that I have way more to work with later. But it should allow you flexibility to do things multiple ways to achieve the same result, uh, which is really nice. Um, with that, that's all I wanted to do. I wanted to show this new server side feature we have where you can fix things directly inside GA4 properties. Uh, this gives you additional flexibility for situations where uh, you just don't have the time to go in to uh, fix the issues at the source. Again, your developer's on vacation or someone can't get to it for a few days, you can use this as a stopgap. I would still very much recommend uh, making sure you go into Google Tag Manager and, and properly name things later so everything's fixed at the source. But this is a really great feature to have in situations where you just need those quick fixes. So with that, thanks so much and hope to see uh,